Okay, well, if I get a notice to appear when I get there, then, you know, it's free for all. Like, a game on. There's a price on the head of every Border Patrol agent. If there's elections, you're going to be expected to vote this way, or you're going to be registered to vote this way. You were able to come back and get a late birth certificate stating that that person was born in the United States. It's like, where to start, where to start with this topic? It's so big because you get constant slant that's obvious on this topic from every news media outlet that you can think of, whether it's your internet, TV, radio, anything like that. And it's a big statistics game, basically. It's who can throw out the most and the most outrageous stats about number of illegal immigrants, number of people coming to the border, a number of encounters at the border. And the reason why it's a game is because it's a moving number all the time. Because uh, for one example, you know, the popular number being thrown out, I, I, and I think mostly by the right, is 8 million number of illegal immigrants that have come to the country in the, in the Biden administration. That's not an accurate number. But, uh, you know, if you take 3.3, which is a more realistic number. And then the 2.5 million that happened under title 42 during COVID. Okay. Now we're getting to like some more realistic numbers that come close to how many have actually come into the country of the 6.5 million encounters that have happened at the border. So these are rough numbers because the way the system is, is by the time people get their day in court, <laughs> that they get a sign. Well, they're, they're going to get a notice, right, to appear in court, or no, notice to appear. But that backlog is four to five years, I think. And so those people are already in the country. They're just waiting for their day to appear in court. So how do you count or classify those people? Um, and it's out there, but that's a moving number, right? So I said I wasn't going to talk about numbers, but here's more numbers. So let's say. You've got 251 working days in a year, 11 government holidays. So, so, so you've got 240 working days in a year that courts can operate, right? So ICE has 1,450 court appointments that they grant a day. In 2023, there were 413,300 appointments, okay? So divided by 240 working days a year, that means 1,722 appointments per day. Well, that leaves 272 cases per day that can't be processed or heard. So what happens to those 272 appointments a day? And that's if you're filling up the 1450 <clears throat> capacity every day. And what an administrative nightmare that must be. Like, that's that's crazy. Like, so I want to back up real quick because you're 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 stunning me here with your approach to this. Because I love it. <laughs> <laughs> but this is not how I was approaching it. Uh, oh, okay. But well, I love it. So I, 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 was trying something different. I was trying something different. I love it. So I have questions. Uh, when you're going through the process, let's say someone comes to the border. Mm -hmm. When they come to the border and say, hey, I'm, I'm here. Like they cross. Sometimes they're never going to get caught by ICE. And then if, uh, and if they're going into a city or if they get pie, like they ride on a train, they hit you riding mm -hmm. a train, get it across the border. Nobody catches them. Nobody sees them. Mm -hmm. And they're in here. We have no idea. Like it's they're kind of the ghosts. Yeah. And there's the ones that are going to get in contact with a, a border patrol uh, mm -hmm. agent, a border patrol agent. Those are the ones that we're counting, right? The ones that yeah. have been in contact. That, those are the ones that we know are here. So that, when they cut and when they get here, they get a notice to appear. So how does to, this, and that's well, when they're that's at the at the court time is I think what. 
bucket they get assigned to, right? So like, are you a national threat? Are you seeking political asylum? Are you like, what's the reason? Um, because unless we know like someone's on a terrorist watch list or something, <clears throat> then DHS will know that and then go after that. Those are the ones that are like trying to track down. So there's a lot more resources thrown at the threats, right? Or if it's drugs or whatever. But we think uh, with families too, this has been the big thing that, you know, where Border Patrol gets back, all these, all those agencies, DHS, ICE, <clears throat> get a bad rap because they're like, you're breaking up families. Well, one factor in that is you get a bunch of kids too that I don't know if this is a, like a bait thing or what, if they, if we know there's been cases of families sending their kids knowing, oh, we're going to get asylum because we sent our kid and they're going to, and they're going to keep that kid in detention and then try to make contact with the parents. And I don't know all the ins and outs of that process, but I know that they don't want to break families up. They've, all those agencies have come out and said that because they've had to, because of the way the media is portraying what's happening down there. So, uh, well, it's interesting. I'm going to come back to the, the family piece, but when they, when they make contact with the border patrol, so does the border patrol arrest them, detain them? Do they send them on their way? Do they take them to a facility? Like what is the process once border patrol gets to an immigrant? That they see or they're coming in across the border and saying hey i want asylum or whatever that is do they just take them and then say okay here's your notice to appear and it could be anywhere from four to seven years yeah they get they get processed so what what is involved in that processing determines what actually happens to them and border patrol representatives when asked that question directly say well it all depends like there isn't a straight answer and it depends on all those things like, okay, well, are, are you a threat? Are you in danger? You know, why are you seeking asylum or, you know, basically why are you here and getting to the bottom of that? But that's where all the administrative resources to process, whatever that process mm -hmm. is at the border is, is going to be caught. I mean, it not going to be, it is, we, we see how costly it is and time consuming. So, when courts are backed up over five years or ballpark, you know, whatever it is, you know, when we're talking about all these crazy stats that I just rattled off, it's like, how are those numbers? How can they be accurate from any source? You know, all you can do is look at the past and like who's been processed and put into what category as far as how they ended up here, because it's just a moving number all the time. I mean, you could have large percentages that, that say, well, it's, it's political asylum. I'm being persecuted in my country. And like, that's it. And, okay. Then sit, w sit and wait to hear for that case. But, you know, just because you're served like an NTA, a notice to appear, like how many of those people are actually showing up? <laughs> you know, like, is that tracked somewhere? I'm not sure that it is. Um, but that's a factor in this too. So all, all we know is, okay, six and a half million, you know, in, in this administration that have showed up. It's what's actually happened to them. So that number has gone up and down since 2019, as far as how many have been refused or, you know, been like, yeah, there's no way. And that's because they're either a perceived threat. We know something about them. There's a drug connection, violence connection that, that they're able to identify immediately at the border and turn them away. But that's only if they make contact with them. That's only if that's, they come through right. and they're able to detain them right but anyone and, any ill intent <laughs> person is not going to do that they're going to evade any authority right you know to you know and, just to get in so. and the, and they're going to make sure they're paying like if they're in contact with the cartel and especially one of the one of the concerns and i think it's legit i know it's legitimate is non i would say maybe not no, i was going to say non-state but it's state actors or state funded actors or those that are non-state funded actors who have ill intent. You talk about sleepers or, you know, those that are coming in to cause harm or, you know, spy, you know, cause you have, it's a big thing with specifically the Chinese that, that come through the Southern border, mm -hmm. as we yep. know is spy, like taking agricultural, like, you know, taking the going to farms is one of the things mm -hmm. too. I don't know if you've seen this is oh, going yeah. to farms and, and taking plants and 
taking them back. And I don't know the whole process and how that works, but mm -hmm. they're, they're all coming in if they're able to uh, come through. And we have no idea who they are. We mm -hmm. have no idea how many they are. And we have no idea where they're from. You know, that's the whole gap of what you're talking about is just what we know. Right. You know, how do gap, we know the unknown? I mean, that's, if we had that answer, we wouldn't have to talk about this and wonder, but, but the gap, I think is, you know, I'm probably not the only one that sees it this way is when it is title 42 and the expiration of title 42, I think is the gap. And that's I say that because title 42 was the COVID was the allowed. COVID was look, we're not, you're not coming in. It's like during COVID. Well, when that expired, you know, I think that, you know, resources were able to scale back down there as far as that, all those processing, because you didn't have to process all these people now because of the pandemic. Well, then all of a sudden, oh, we set an expiration date and then, okay, the floodgates open back up. Okay. Well, and then you just, did they really prepare for all that admin work that has to happen to process this amount of people? No. So that's where you end up with such a gap. And then you see pictures of these detention facilities where, um, it could be a broken family, like some of their families already in and some of them are trying to get in, you know, that might be a detention situation or waiting on a, a background check. If they do have some kind of identification, you know, to, to come back or just trying to get to the bottom of what's your story when you don't have any identification and you show up at the border, like uh, th these detention facilities are not designed to hold people very long. And it, it's supposed to be like an in and out deal. And that's not what seems to be going on down there and so and, and so this is i think discussion with the immigration bill and, and it goes you know crazy because the republicans in the house had an immigration bill the senate didn't want to touch it and then they mm -hmm. come up with a quote unquote bipartisan bill that doesn't even get in, into the house so how bipartisan is it right and the the interesting i guess you talk you know the expectation in this bill and why so many were anti this bill that you would, you know, you hear, oh, it's an immigration bill. It's going to give us the reform that we need is I think to that point, you were saying, hey, you know, did they think about the administrative aspect and the cost and the human resources required to process all of these immigrants? And this bill is addressing that and saying, mm -hmm. hey, we have prop, but that's the point. But the counterpoint to that bill is it is it's an allowance for that. And I think they're coming back and, and saying this is all illegal they're not supposed to be coming in this way and we're trying to fund a way to let them in illegally and then five to seven years address their situation so i think yeah, that's that the work. interesting aspect is is you know it's on one aspect how do you stop it is the question on one hand on the other hand is how do you how do you make sure that we relieve the administrative burden the way it is right now that's going to be the tough part but you know if the u.s government saw a need to ramp up how many irs need agents that needed to be hired then why can't they <laughs> figure out a way to hire more border patrol agents or you know but not necessarily border patrol agents but you know people to process these cases and come to quick resolutions on what should be done um instead of overcrowding detention facilities or um the catch and release so to speak which you know it's like supposed to sound humane but is it really it's it, <laughs> i don't know but it, it's like that all right if you're in their shoes and you're like okay well if i get a notice to appear when i get there then you know it's free for all like a game on like that's that's a success story if if you're I'm, if you're showing up right like I, five, I just came from honduras and i'm trying to get in and for five to seven years you're able to work in the united states get free health care if you have a child then mm -hmm. you're you're anchored into the united states mm -hmm. they, they using the term an anchor baby i know now some people yeah. think that that's not a nice term but mm -hmm. if you think of from the perspective of somebody who is coming in five to seven years you know that you're going to stay because you've been if you can be a productive member of this of site or not commit mm -hmm. crime or whatever have a kid maybe or and there's tricks to that which people aren't aware of because you can have a delayed birth certificate so if you can't if you come by and you're not caught with a young 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 child you're able to come back and get a late birth certificate stating that that person was born in the united states hmm. and so there's and, and 
And so when you when you look at like the different ways, you, you, five to seven years, if you are caught, like, hey, they're not going to kick me out. Right. So it is in essence, and, and then you see, you know, companies like Tyson who fires citizens. It, it came out in the news the last week, just hi, uh, fires all these Americans and then says, yeah, we're going to hire 52,000 illegal immigrants and they've been known to hire illegal immigrants in their past but they've always been caught and they mm -hmm. well not always but but they get in trouble for it. the federal government hammers them and now they're like oh well the federal government's giving them work permits right yeah so, that doesn't add up but. so let's fire all these citizens who are working for barely a decent wage and hire all these illegals and I say to illegals because they're there illegally, but they are permitted, which doesn't make any sense. That's like saying well, that's like saying robbing CVS legally according to who, right? <laughs> right. Oh wait, we legally let them, we legally let them do their job. We are no longer going to be going after shoplifting as a crime. So why oh. is it a crime? Um, right. Yeah. Why is it illegal if they're legal? And that I think that's the question with with this new immigration bill. You know, there's a whole process and basically we formalize to accept them in. But what's what are we doing about keeping them out to begin with? Well, this is where, uh, OK, well, Title VIII, the original legal processing of what constitutes a legal uh, immigration. Like, is is it, you know, how, how does it make room for legitimate refugee situations? Um, you know, where's the the like? The, there's no talk about that anymore. I'm like, that's still the law. Like, like why didn't, it's almost as if, you know, the, the border doesn't matter. It's just an imaginary line and like ports of official ports of entry into the United States, I, I think are meaningless now. I mean, it, there's so many different ways to get in that people, if you're trying to get in, you go to a port of entry, you almost better be sure you're going to just get, I'll should write it because for whatever reason you're bringing to to the port of entry because otherwise you would just not even observe the port of entry just find another way in like yeah. and go through all that red tape i mean i'm a little surprised that there's not other ways i mean i'm sure there are i'm sure there's like underground like tricks of the trade how to get into america like websites and stuff like oh, that there are, yeah. like there are so and they're not they're not so underground yeah I mean, because really anymore, it, it's just like a, here's how you built the system in the process. So, so title eight, then it, it doesn't really mean anything because there's so many exceptions. And, and like they say, you know, it all depends on your situation. Well, if we don't make a firm, like either here's the, here's the criteria, you either meet it or you don't. And you know, it, it's an, if then statement, if you don't, then this happens. If you do, then this happens. Like it's not clearly spelled out. And until it's clearly spelled out, unfortunately, it's going to continue to just be a big cluster down there. I mean, how are you going to staff and plan and really be able to process people with any sort of efficiency that isn't just riddled with exceptions all the time, you know? Yeah. And they're all protected too. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. The administrative aspect it's it's the largest the largest uh isn't the largest union in the united states is the federal mm -hmm. employees union well it's it's funny i get uh like junk mail <clears throat> all the time i don't know if it's because i'm an arizona resident uh trying to recruit me for border border patrol all the, all the time they're trying to get anybody and everybody to to do yeah. it and at first i was like is this a legitimate email like is ice i don't know if it was ice or dhs or somebody that's sending it but there's also like private security for companies on the u.s side in in places along the border that are like we just don't want to deal with this so not like it even has to be through the federal government <clears throat> but it, to yeah. patrol their businesses and, and i would say it's uh, until the federal government as an organism can figure out how to stem the flow which they know how to um, they have the political will against the the very strong forces that want this to happen. Um, I wouldn't want anybody, I, I wouldn't recommend to anybody be a Border Patrol agent. There's a, Willie Nelson just came out with a song. I don't know if you heard this. New music. New from music Willie from Willie Nelson. And it's about Nushin, the border. Nushin. 
<laughs> it's about the border and in it and i forget exactly the words but he said something that stuck with me i heard it there's a price on the head of every border patrol agent mm -hmm. and that's true man like, taking your life that, in your hands yeah you are I mean, who's lining up for that job right who's lining up for that job when you don't have the yeah you don't have the support, yeah. you like don't the have the support oh, i know <laughs> yeah it's it's unfortunate that we've we've criminalized those who are uh, enforcing the laws and it's a we we're criminalizing how are they laws way. how how can right. they how can they be laws then like by definition <laughs> like okay so so ice has enforcement in their name if you're you're enforcing the law like that's the whole essence of the job and now you're you're getting smeared by the, the media you're getting you know falsified claims about what you do and what your policies are and what you're told to do and and, and all of that but it's it's not a job people are going to line up to do no so so why why is it there there's i think for the average common person you me anybody else you know that's working lived here trying to figure out why is it that they won't just stop it cuz like look at texas and we and we talked about you know mm -hmm. the states which we can get into but texas is sending the national guard what's what's stopping the federal government from you know we have we have military all over the world what's stopping them from coming to our border and just saying okay this is it we're just going to detain I, you i have a theory i want to hear it Okay. I have a theory too. Well, the theory is if if the current administration allows it to happen, and who knows what they're really being told as far as like the families, the, the immigrants that are coming to the border and they're having those encounters. <clears throat> Do you think that they're being told, oh, in, in that waiting period, um, if there's elections, you're going to be expected to vote this way, or you're going to be registered to vote this way. I think this administration but could be, I don't know this for sure, but the, my theory is that, okay, well, you're just letting votes for your way come into the border. So you're just perpetuating the future uh, security of your party by allowing that many votes to just flow freely into the country. I mean, it makes sense to me. Like, if if you were the one behind the scenes able to actually control that and put a policy in to do that you know because they don't care when they come in like oh you do you want to actually like educate yourself vote for yourself on the policies that you think will be beneficial for you and your family and your security and your kids no like if it gets you in you're gonna vote how i tell you to vote that is like probably an extreme way to put it but i wouldn't be surprised if there's some sort of stipulation tied to whatever liberties are given at the border at that time if if they're allowed you know to just sit and wait on a court date so, so you think it's it's vote farming and do, do you think potentially I think, I think it's interesting because in tandem over the last six eight may have been a little bit longer years we've been the immigration conversation has has been going along and voter ID has been going along too, which there's seems like the same ones that champion the champion the immigrants coming in mm -hmm. unchecked or undocumented, letting them you know come in, are the same ones that are championing saying you shouldn't have to require voter ID. And so I, I I get it on one aspect, but how I understand the voter ID problem is not the argument or the point that these people who champion it would argue. Their their whole point is people who are minorities or poor can't afford or it's not easy for them to get an id that's that's the only argument they have which i think is mm -hmm. a horrendously racist uh, way to look at things yeah. to say just because you're a certain you look a certain way it's harder for you mm -hmm. but the the other side is is okay so it's it's not that it's it's at the same time they're thinking okay we have a potential to what you're saying is vote farm and we're going to open up the borders as much as we can and clog everything up in the court you know the court of public opinion the judicial system all that about voter id and have as many people as we can for as long as we can vote the way that we want them to 
the only reason I'm saying that vote farming it is what could be going on here is because what other benefit to answer your question would there would there be if if you turn on the news and you're just hearing the administration blast out the message of we're doing everything we can but you're not doing everything you can because <laughs> we have military forces we we're able to stop it like you said like we it's not that we're not able to we're I mean, our the, the military is hamstrung by the administration's policies on this. That's the roadblock. They're not we're not able to actually enforce anything. So so ICE is just a puppet agency that is, you know, I, I guess like saying they're doing all the right things, but someone's telling them what to do and how to handle certain situations in those border encounters. So if it's not vote farming, like what other motivation? I can't figure out or, or understand what other reason there would be. So, so I think there's a couple other options. Uh, I would say there's three specifically that I would go to. One is, I mean, the uh, the United States is the empire of the world, but it's an empire that's that's not been seen like what has been seen in the past. Our empire exists because we are the dominant navy. We control the shipping. You know everything that ships without pirate you know for as long as we did without piracy without naval battles all those conflicts is because after world war ii we said okay no more of this we've got it we're going to pay for it because the united states is all about commerce all about trade for us to be successful that means we need a good ocean and for you to stop having war so we're the only ones that can do it mm -hmm. like basically that's that's the thing we're the we're the only bosses around and that's it mm -hmm. and so we have all of this trade, all of this, you know, control through, through the world. So we have people who are, um, the United States is one aspect is the global superpower. Um, I'm not exactly sure where I was going with that point, but I can transition it to, you have a corporate, oh, the empire, military aspect. So you have, the, I'll cut this part. So you have a, a military need to support the efforts that we have globally to support all of our interests and make no mistake our interests are and only our economic and that's what our interests are and that's what we're going to protect and we have to have a military to protect it if it wasn't the resources that we need to access around the world our military would be on our southern border i, I think but the whole point is is the southern border being open lends itself to speed or I should say fast tracking a lot of people to citizenship and filling the ranks of the United States military in order to continue to support that, that military industrial complex and resource control around the world. So we have, uh, I think last year, 2023, we were around 41,000 uh, recruits short of our goal, which was roughly 25% of that year's total goal 25 percent of that year's total goal of recruits we couldn't meet and there's a whole lot of reasons for that but if you look at it who in the united states you, you know there is a a after i think iraq afghanistan the way we got out of both of them the reasons that we were at least in, in iraq but the reasons and, and you know 15 20 years removed there's a whole generation that's that's growing up and saying i don't want my kids to be in the military and, and a generation of kids that mm -hmm. you know and, and young men specifically that you know they might want to do masculine things but like, i'm not i'm not going to do that mm -hmm. I, i'm not you know and i say, i'm not going to join the, the military and go fight in some stupid war that you know means nothing to me and the families are saying that too so you see from the empire aspect there's there's a uh, you know a, a fatigue at these little jaunts these military jaunts that we have but it's mm -hmm. kind of strange because it goes hand in hand it's it's part of our economic superpower it's it's that's what's you know as a, somebody in the military you are you're you are defending not just the united states but you are defending the american way of life and so people are joining and I, there was i think it was a senator that said and i have to look back at who this was that got up and said this on the floor that this is going to be a great way to be able to replenish you know our our, our military is through you know all of these people that are coming in and want to sacrifice to you know and they say in a, a nice way hey they want to sacrifice mm -hmm. to to be an american which is great I, but but if you're looking to take 25 to 50 percent of your military of non-citizens 
you know, it's a concern similar to, you know, they were trying to look in, in Illinois, Northern Illinois to have non-citizens be able to be police. You mm-hmm. know, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense. So, you know, the pendulum goes one way or the other, but it's the empire. That's one, you know, it's like Rome, Rome fell because in essence, the military got taken over. Outside forces. By, yeah. Yeah. And so, so then the military controlled the empire. Well, yeah. And then which you have is, a military state and then that can evolve into God knows how many different right. types of regimes that you don't want as a citizen. <laughs> so, so here's, here's, I think point number one with the military, it all comes down to this. I think one idea is the military itself is wanting this and, and maybe not just necessarily the military, but the military industrial complex is wanting this. And that's, that's a potential. I can so see that. Boat farming. I mean, complex. that makes sense. Yeah. Like that, that, that's a valid point. I mean, you're right. Nobody here wants to wants to do that. So I recently tried to join the Navy at 40 years old. Did you? And I did. And I wanted to make sure that the reason they shot me down was because of my age. So, and I had a nice conversation with the recruiter because I said, so it doesn't matter if I can, if I can beat the physical tests, if I can meet all the requirements that, sh- that you're asking for. I pass a background check. I'll pass any kind of check you want. And and because I'm 40 years old, you won't take me. I just want to make sure I'm clear. And they were like, yes, that is the reason we won't take you. I said, no matter if I want to serve, I want, and I, I am qualified for the job specifically that I'm trying to get in this branch of the government. They were like, yeah, we, you're 40, you're too old, we won't take you. That was the sole reason they, they wouldn't take me. So there is that too, which I, I don't, I can understand like, well, what do you, what are you are you planning to, to put me th- i mean obviously basic you know or anything like that but just by being 40 nowadays like disqualifies you i mean if if now all of a sudden there are certain you know candidates that want us to have to work until age 75 so okay so then if you're moving the age of everything back then why can't a 40 year old be in the military i know this is a, maybe a topic for another day but, but it's a good question if, if they're open up to where um I'll just say it. If a man can transition to a woman and become a woman in the military with the amount and, and a woman can do that as a man, and you're, you're looking at significant, cha- significant changes and the human resources, I guess, aspect of the military, mm-hmm. why wouldn't age be a, and if they're looking at, you know, the immigrant immigration status and loosening up to where not even American citizens mm-hmm. can, you know, be in the military well, as much as they were before. Yeah, it's age discrimination. Like that's exactly like what it is. Like, how could you make a hard, fast rule on age when every other requirement may be met? You know, like then that's yeah. discrimination in any other in any other case, right? So you're just taking the argument from sex to age. Same thing. Yeah, I mean, I before five years ago, or no, three years ago, before three years ago, I could have easily told you the reason why. And gone through this is why because age because you're more excellent but after the last three years when i've seen how much it has changed in the military culture how much they are attempting i would say attempting to change it it just why aren't they just letting it like why aren't they just letting everybody in what does age have to do with it if you can pass all of the physical aspects and you've already opened up the door to so many other different ideas in the military exactly. why can't you open up that the we'll door to age. they're already opening it up to gender that's what i'm saying is it, it's now a it, if if enough people now this is the thing i'm probably the only one in america i'm probably not the only one but there's probably a very very small number of 40 year olds in america that would consider joining up but you know if enough of them did and made a stink like you how could you shoot it how could you shoot it down like like you said You're like so be- you'll let a transitioning individual in, and that has no bearing on their performance. Why would my age? Yeah, I think it's a little bit more. I think ultimately, it's got. It comes down to it's a little bit more difficult to uh, brainwash is not the right influence, word, but, <laughs> but reprogram somebody to be a soldier the older they get. I can see that. That makes sense. But I think I'm gonna going back to but, your point. But everything else is theory. <laughs> <laughs> on the uh on the reasons uh for why so many immigrants are coming in because eventually when ai is deciding our elections for us anyway there'll be no need for vote farming because the elections will just be decided so i mean that 
they'll, they'll just they'll just go through really, the projections. <laughs> that won't that really won't be a need, right? Because <laughs> because the whole argument, yeah, they'll go through the projections, the court of public opinion, like, and and that that will be how it's decided. It'll be determined by clicks, not not by people's ability to obtain licenses to to vote, because that is ultimately gonna fail. I think like it, you will always need a license to run a business, get married, to even fish, but you will never need one to vote. That will never go. That'll never happen. It's yeah. It's it's because each of the states are allowed to handle the way they vote constitutionally. So some states do and some states don't. And and you cannot solve you cannot resolve it. Well, I'm gonna say this legally, constitutionally, you cannot resolve it without changing the constitution. Mm -hmm. But there is going to be funny some... how state policies now get ganged up on by other states who don't have the same policies. Like you really saw this with the abortion thing, but it, it's even with like little things now where it's like, well, in this state, you can't do this. Well, why do you care? Why is that news? Like it's a, they're their own state. Like you have to recognize the level of sovereignty that a state has yeah. to do, to do that. Like if you don't like it, just go to another state. Like exactly. States are an amazing the beauty of America, really. Like if you don't like a policy or you don't like the cost of living or the tax structure or anything that's going on in a particular state, just go to another state. <laughs> that's yeah. And, and that's as difficult as it may be for some to do that. You still are not restricted by the government from moving to somewhere else. True. I know that. Yeah, that's not easy to do. But in theory, it but the can government is simple. not right. The government is not restricting you right. from saying like if you go anywhere else in the world, and you're like, I don't like the way them, you know, go to try that in China, try that in Saudi Arabia, try that, it, yeah. even try it like uh, in some places still within the borders of the country. Yeah. You're same rules. Mm -hmm. And we have the opportunity. Yeah. to be like, okay, this doesn't work for me. That's, that's a great point. I'm going to mm -hmm. go with my second idea is, and we've talked about this before in previous uh, episodes. The second idea uh, is why it's not illegal, even though it's illegal is because the influence that corporations have on our elected leaders and policymakers and the media because they're paying for everything and the need to whittle down to the middle class and suppress wages i mean we talked about the tyson example earlier uh, you know firing firing american citizens and then promising to hire illegal immigrants knowing that they're not going to have to pay as much and they can let go of the, you know it's going to be different um there is a piece to the 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 part of capitalism which a lot of free market economists don't want to admit is there is a part of capitalism that if it's not reined in it will take it will rein in the government because once they have the say and the dollars are the one that's you know nobody's going to give money to a candidate if the candidate doesn't say hey i got your back like why would i give you money if you don't have my back so when they can go in there and influence the policymakers and the politicians and the media to say hey this is what we're looking for and the whole thing is we need to suppress wages so our profits increase that's the dirty part of capitalism and that was that's that treatment of capitalism is what pushed you know the karl marx the bolshevik revolution all of the communism that you know the united states specifically has tried to fight for the last 100 years is because when capitalism does this to most of the people and, and they lose control so i think part of it is is if not all of it uh, is the corporations? And I, I sound like a South Park episode. They're being all corporationy, mm -hmm. and they don't they don't care as long as they're able to keep labor costs, which as they dwindle it down, and and you know they're looking, hey, we can replace a lot with AI, with robots, automation, machine learning, all this aspect, and for the labor that we need, we can get it the lowest cost possible by just having people that are supposed to be here, and we don't have to pay, and then. They're going to get the ta enough taxes to where the government is going to put people on, on welfare. They're going to put them on some sort of subsidy or something. And it kind of is enough just to pacify everybody, which is dangerous because if you don't, if you have enough people out there with, without purpose, that's, that's dangerous. Well, but I, what I you think just that's described that's is the solution to <laughs> all the problems that we were talking about before, right? Like, so be because of people not wanting to work in, uh, the trades or any job that, you know, doesn't involve, you know, sitting behind a screen just because it's not sexy enough or, or, or maybe previously thought to not pay enough, uh, you know, in a lot of those trades now, like you're making as much or more because there's so few people doing it. And so if, if you're, uh, a tradesman, like I would think this would be a great time. 
for you because you have more options open to you to do the work you do than you've ever had before. You have more options to to market yourself. Um, and there's still services people need. Like it's not like that stuff's going away. Like plumbers, electricians, you know, um, welders. It doesn't matter. If, like sheetrock hangers. It doesn't matter. Like someone still has to do that, and there's got to be a market for it until robots are doing all of those things for us. But you know, it, like you said, it's it's the tax dodging way to do it too, and, and the corporations being all corporation, <laughs> like yep. in that way. So. Yep. Yeah. And it's, it's interesting. It's, you know, the college lie strikes again. We talked about college and, you know, is it, is it worth it anymore? Like, what are they doing there? But it's, it's the lie again. I, I heard somebody say their business in their business, they, um, uh, a brewery and it wasn't Josh, it was a different one. Um, they said, you know, they, they had, it was a larger one. They had to hire some admin, you know, some people from college, you know, management trainees, something like that. You know, they're hiring them, getting them $50,000 a year straight out of college. But they're paying somebody who just graduated high school out on the dock $115,000. And, and I heard that. I'm like, you've got to be. And, and I, don't, I don't know what this – to me, it still sounds like a lot of money. But I don't – you know, it's, it's kind That's of crazy. because the saturation of college graduates who don't have any real skills or yeah. stand out enough from the crowd just because they have the piece of paper doesn't qualify them for some exceptional – job anymore there's a saturation it's or it's, it's pride they could make twice as much but they don't want to tell somebody they're a dock worker that that plays into it too absolutely yeah. no yeah. question yeah titles matter to some people so and the, the third and last idea and i'll just leave you with this is it's a global conspiracy to overtake the strongest empire in the world and george soros is behind it because he's funding all of the non-governmental organizations that are supplying the maps and the safe houses and all the videos and education videos about squatters rights and the amount of time how much money it takes and all of the different ways that you can get and stay inside of the united states the grand conspiracy and armageddon is going to happen in the next soon there okay. might be a me there might be a meteor and ufos that's the third one but That's I think all the more reason that you know you should visit soon because you know, know. it could all yeah. end tomorrow, man. So. Yeah, it always could. I think it's it's all of it. It's vote farming. Military wants it. The corporations want it. And to an extent, there's a lot of people outside the United States that would like to see us squabble. Yeah, absolutely. Oh yeah, that's not going away. Yeah. So, is the wall the answer? Because that's one part of this whole thing that we hadn't even really talked about. Is the wall the answer? I say it's part of the answer. Does it really solve the problem completely, do you think? There is no silver bullet. You have to have a shotgun. And every pellet is going and hitting another component of this problem. And a wall is one of those. Mm -hmm. because it cuts down on that percentage of bad actors that have no intention of having any contact with any authorities at the border. Right. But that's an unknown moving number. So, yeah. Yeah. That's tough. What do you, what do you think? I, I agree. I just think it's, it's part of it because of that reason, it only cuts down part of the problem. Um, what frustrates me is though in the media, it's portrayed like it is the answer. Like, well, if we just had the wall, well, <laughs> really? Well, well, we still have ports of entry into the country. So we still have discrepancies that happen. We have sensitive situations. We have families and we have criminals. We have like uh, the whole spectrum of types of people and types of reasons to seek asylum. Um, yeah. or escape whatever situation they're in, whether it's to harm the U.S., to spy, whether it's simply just because your situation is so bad and you want the opportunity to improve it. I mean, but it, again, the administrative work that it's going to take to vet that any more timely than they're doing now, it, it, it's almost as if the backlog is is just going to keep getting longer and longer. And that's probably by design. I, I mean, I just, the, what you asked, you know, is, is it going to be feasible to, uh, you know, have somebody down there that's taking every single case and like rushing it through to be able mm -hmm. to come up to a quick resolution and they don't have the people to do that. There's no 
there's not enough manpower to do that. So they're going to have to just keep pushing that backlog. And then this is where the vote farming comes in. And that may be just an, un, I don't know, maybe, is that an unattended consequence? You know, it's a, just because we don't have the, the people to process everyone the way we're processing, but change the process if you really wanted to do something about that problem. Right. I, I think it's an intended consequence. I, I think the intent, the intent is to legalize the people that are here and mm -hmm. give them give them voting rights give them citizenship rights you're, you're here now we're not going to push you out right we need you to pay taxes i mean there's going to be something that they say to sell it we need to make sure that they're paying their fair share because fair share is a buzz they, they love that word yeah. well, they need to pay their fair share right. we need to legalize yeah. them we need to and if they're paying taxes then they need the right to vote well, that's what's going to happen the vote farming yeah but it is scary that you know without all the proper vetting is ugh, the people with bad intentions can be very smart and if there are people coming in that want to do something bad on a big scale <clears throat> then they're here they've already done it and they're operating and we don't know to what end like how can we know that so it it's either a lot of intelligence work that is that is going on behind the scenes i mean if, if we're able to with facial recognition identify anybody who was involved with january 6th then how can we not do that at the border with anybody that we know that could be a bad actor you know that we are and if we're not you we can, should be you can pre-write the next 9 11 commission report and I wish I wish those words never came out of my mouth. Yeah. Yeah. But it's how can you not see that? I mean, with with what's going on, it's it's right there, and it's a legitimate concern. Yeah. I guess you take the good with the bad. If you're uh, if you're the people that aren't truly impacted by this, and you know, in your town, like it, it doesn't matter if you experience a a you know a raise in your crime rates or you know you have a situation like they did in Georgia where you know somebody that was like, hey, uh, this happened. We got a crackdown. Is it is there really going to be a crackdown coming? Probably not. It's just If there I, was, it would have happened by now. I think, you know, NIMBY, not in my backyard. I think that's the major problem here is, mm -hmm. is ah, we need immigrants, but just as long as they're not here. I, I think if somebody well, that's why like... I was so mad about buses of yeah. boats coming in. Oh, it's it's Governor Abbott and DeSantis's fault. Yeah, blank because they still do. Yeah, um, but I think you know to solve all this, all you have to do is the federal government needs to come in and take every golf course, eminent domain, mm -hmm. and then put up encampment sites at every single golf course in the United States. And as soon as that as soon as that plan goes into effect, there's going to be a wall. The military is going to have every single one of their patrollers uh, and and everybody on the border. You're going to see more drones than you've ever seen doing drone dances in the sky. Drones being all drony? Uh, they're being all drony and armies being all army y. <laughs> and the walls being wall y. So why do you hate golf so much? If you inconvenience the people who are not inconvenienced and are, are profiting from it, mm -hmm. And that's it's, oh. it's a it's a stupid idea because it's never going to happen. But I'm just telling you, <laughs> as, well, that's what it is. Like, okay, well, this is how we solve a problem, and there's a stupid solution that just might work. But like, that's what you just described about the golf courses. Yeah, it, but it makes sense, and that could be done in like a whole lot of different ways. But that would be, that's an extreme. That's just that's an extreme case. But you know. Yeah. Yeah.